Thank you everyone for tuning in and we're gonna get right into this video. Many of you thought we were going to be choosing the Airstream for our next rig. And while we love those iconic silver Twinkies, we did not choose Airstream. We ended up getting an Outdoors RV model 22 FQS with the titanium package. And in this video, we're going to go over the reasons why we chose that model as well as compare it to our top competitors, which for us were obviously the Airstream, the Black Series, and the Lance. We felt this was the Goldilocks trailer for us. It ticked the most boxes of everything that we had on our list. Starting off with its off-road capability, it has a great suspension package. It's a Moride CRE 3000 where it has some extra travel, um, KYB shocks on it, 16 inch wheels, and it has really good ground clearance. So we don't have to worry about lifting it and it's gonna allow us to get off uh, the beaten path a little bit and hopefully get out there a little bit farther like we want to. The price of these trailers comes in at a really good value. The MSRP is ranging $45,000 to $55,000 and considering the craftsmanship of the build, we were really happy with that value. The tank sizes on this trailer is insane. It has an 80 gallon fresh tank. That's absolutely nuts for a 26 foot trailer and the gray and the blacks are both 40 gallons a piece. So, this is a really good size tanks for us to sit out boondocking for well over a week into two weeks with ease. No, no more, more solo cup. <laughs> no more red solo cups. Outdoors RV claims they have a true four season trailer. And if you watch some of the construction videos and tour videos from Matt and Diana on Adventurous Way, they certainly do seem like they have a very, very well built trailer with lots of layers of insulation. They're, they build their own chassis custom built, so that's how they get those giant tanks because they can place them where they want to, and so it's kind of all custom that way. And these tanks are wrapped in insulation, put up into the underbelly with more insulation, and then they're closed off in the bottom with the ducting from the furnace. So these things, as long as your furnace is on, you should be able to you know, uh, have it go way down below freezing into like the zero degree temperatures. Although we really only care about one season that's sunny and 70. It's nice to have this option. We are from Minnesota. We never know when we have to head back home at any abrupt time. It could be in the middle of winter and it's just a good feeling. And insulation works both ways from the cold and the heat. So that's where we're really gonna, you know, trek out this, this insulation as if we're sitting out in the middle of the desert with the sun blaring on us, like how well is it gonna insulate us from the heat? They use a two inch thick aluminum bonded wall. So they're, the walls are actually super thick and all around the slide outs, along with thermal pane windows and extra large AC and furnace. We're both really happy that this trailer has a really great height clearance on it. It has a nice rounded ceiling and at the top of the height, it's six feet 11. So that's plenty of space for Aaron to walk around freely, not skim his head on anything and just really stand tall and confident always. And if that, the height adds so much to the feeling, and then in addition to that, we also have a slide out, which is going to really help open up the space especially coming from a really tiny galley in the van. So the dinette's gonna be a great way to push out our office, push out our living space, and then also that dinette does convert down into a bed. So if we ever do have guests, we'll be able to facilitate them for the first time. Yeah, and it does not have the enclosed bedroom that we were kind of looking for, but that's really hard to get on a 26 and shorter trailer. Almost a, no, studio. a studio. Yeah, there you go, a studio where it's, Everything's kind of all one, but I think it's gonna feel nice and big and open and spacious. And uh, we're really hoping that it uh, feels homey and nice in there. Speaking of that, let's talk about the kitchen on this thing for a little bit. We said we wanted a big kitchen. Some of the things we looked at did not have big kitchens. And I'm really happy that we ended up going this way because Chris spends so much time in there. And this open floor plan has this huge, like eight foot kitchen countertop with you know an actual oven and a microwave and a big like square nice sink and tons of cabinet space up top and below i mean it's just going to be like 
a, a kitchen's dream for yeah, us. I'm so excited for that. Like everything Aaron said is great. I'm finally gonna have storage. I've been wanting to get an air fryer for the past three years and I finally can get one. Um, and we don't have to like just be so limited in the kitchen. And I actually lost a little bit of my passion for cooking over the years mm. in the van. And I'm sad because I just kind of realized that being back in a big kitchen now. So I'm really excited to get back into like where my heart is while cooking. Along with all of that interior storage, there's also good exterior storage on this thing. It has a full pass through cubby up front. So that will be nice to be able to stick all of our outside stuff. We had absolutely no outside storage. And sometimes you just don't have a lot of outside storage. So that's going to be great to have that extra bit of space. And I, I don't know what we're going to put in there, but... Oh, I'm sure it will fill up quickly. Yeah, who knows, but I'm really excited about that. Also in the kitchen is real hardwood cabinets. ORV actually builds their own cabinets also. Um, so they're like a nice high quality cabinet. And then the surfaces in there are all solid surface. So it's an actual kind of, you know, stone, LG, um, you know, solid surface on the whole kitchen island. And then also in the bedroom, and the bathroom, it's all solid surface. Mm. And that just kind of, you know, gives you that nice little extra feeling of it being, um, you know, good quality. Yeah, fit and finish has always been important to us. That was one of the top reasons we bought the Airstream van. And it's one of the reasons we ended up buying um, this trailer. Yeah, and we're not gonna lie to you. The interior is about 800 shades of brown <laughs> and it's not our favorite. That is definitely something that we're not excited about. But in the last year, ORV has done a great job with lightening up that um, solid surface countertop. It used to be kind of a speckled, dark speckled. Now it's a very, very light. Um, and their cabinets, like I said, they're you know a really nice hardwood. And if we can do a little bit of like backsplash on the kitchen, uh, paint the walls white, maybe do something with some of the dark trim. Um, I think it'll be an easy, cheap remodel um, to really make it how, how we want it. Yeah, and I actually love painting. Mm, yes. Like weirdly love it. So it's going to be a very satisfying thing to do right away when we get in there. I think painting, we, you know, we're gonna do some things right away, like the painting, the black splash, like Aaron said, and yeah. just get a little bit more comfortable. That's one thing that we learned with the van is like, if there's things that you wanna change, don't wait two years to do it. Just like knock it off right away and it'll be so much better. Yeah, well, the important thing is to get good bones, like a good bone structure, mm -hmm. like, you know, the chassis, the cabinets, the countertops, those things that you can't really change without getting too crazy in an RV. And then just add those little things that, um, you know, change it like a lot. Like I said, a backsplash in the kitchen, that would be, you know, a huge, huge difference just to change the, the whole feel of the kitchen. I'm really excited to get ducted air conditioning and mm. ducted heat. That's such a, a big thing where we didn't have that in the van. Obviously there's not much vans out there <laughs> that are ducted like that. But for it to be quieter with the air conditioner and for the heat, for it to be more even. More consistent. Yep, and I think that will just be a great feel. And you throw that along in with the, you know, the good insulation that ORV does with their great windows. Hopefully it stays cooler in the summertime and hotter in the wintertime. Yeah. And then last, um, I would say a big factor was a few other full timers really recommended ORV to us. And, you know, so especially like Matt and Diana living in this thing for a few years, that's a good testament to how it holds up. And, you know, we do appreciate everybody giving us all their suggestions because a lot of this stuff we couldn't even see. You know, that, that's why shopping was so difficult for us because, you know, we weren't shopping for years where we kind of had a good idea of how everything felt. You know, we have to kind of order this thing on a whim and we're hoping that it's as good as, as what we think it is. So I think that uh, covers all like the main reasons why we really went with it. And now we're gonna have just a little bit of fun and compare it to some of the other RVs that we were looking at. Um, it, we loved all these other styles for many reasons as well. So that's gonna be fun to compare these and let's just get into it. Okay, starting off with our top contender, the Airstream. 25 FB, we absolutely 
loved this trailer for many, many years, and it's actually probably what started us even... Looking uh, at trailers. Yep, even thinking about it. So we absolutely love the history of Airstream. We love the great look. The community. Feel, the community. I mean, Airstream... We'll just we'll always love them, and I and I still will always want to probably be in one, and and that might happen still one day. Um, there's so many great positives about Airstream, and I think the biggest one for us was like the interior mm -hmm. layout, feel, the lightness of it, the windows, like that was kind of like we always felt very comfortable and very homey in them every time you walk in it's like a breath of fresh air and you know the european design elements that they put into place their color schemes the quality of everything it's just great you there's no arguing that air streams are absolutely gorgeous inside and outside we're from minnesota so you might think that we like the cabin interior a little bit better of the orv but we really do like the lighter brighter interior of the airstream a lot better um, and so our goal is going to be to lighten and brighten up that ORV. I love the all aluminum construction of Airstreams. I think that's great. They use nice good chassis and torsion axles. Um, their aluminum skin and aluminum ribs and that thing like if you take care of one of those they can last you know 50, 60, 70 years. Um, they're, they're awesome. But along with all of that metal and all of that glass, you can run into some issues with loss of heat and air conditioning. Um, like that's the number one place where you're gonna lose all of your insulation is through the windows. And that's like the big battle. Like, do you want it light and bright and airy or do you want it to be, you know, uh, closed off and, and uh, better with the heat and the insulation? So we'd always choose the windows because that's the, the way we would go. but. I like all of ORV's construction methods that they use, um, except for maybe the, the fiberglass construction on the outside can be a weak point for, you know, if you don't seal that properly, there could be some water intrusion or, you know, there's horror stories of delamination and things like that. We don't really know anything about that, but of course that's like the big horror stories of it. And the roofs, you know, they're a rubber membrane on the roof, so you gotta be careful with leaks punctures and things like that. So that's one thing that's just great about the Airstream. It's just this metal can that uh, we love. I really liked the tank sizes in the Airstream. They're very, very respectable at close to 40 gallons, fresh gray and black each. That's pretty good for a shorter Airstream. And I think those would have, we would have been able to make those work. Yeah, we were comfortable with those sizes, definitely. Yep. Carrying extra water is the easiest thing to do. So, um, you know, that's something that, hey, as long as we have close to that 40 gallons gray and black, we can, we can just carry more water if we really want to. So the nice thing about the ORV is that we have tons of fresh water and we don't have to worry about getting a bladder or filling up extra drinking water jugs. The storage on the Airstream is a little bit less than desired for us. Along with all those great looks and streamlined designs, you kind of lose a little bit of space and not only on the inside, but especially on the outside. Um, and that's just something we've really looking forward to is having a place to dump our, our electrical cords and our wet hoses and who knows what else we want to store outside. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once you get into the bigger air streams, like 27 foot and longer, yeah. then you do get a, quite a good amount of inside storage. But since we weren't looking that big, the storage on the 25 foot was just a little bit tiny for us. Yeah, and the kitchen is on the smaller side. Once you have the sink open and the stove open, you're probably left with, I don't know, like a 14 or 16 inch area of mm -hmm. counter space. Whereas the ORV, we're planning on possibly leaving the sink uncovered all the time because there's so much space that we can just leave the sink open, which is that's like, how awesome it is. That's unheard of in an RV. Usually you got to put those sink covers on there because you need that extra counter space. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, that's just, you know, part of the design with Airstream. They pack it all in there nice and perfect. 
I mean, the, the layout of the 25 FB, I don't even know if that's changed in like two decades or more or less. I just saw one that was 10 years old and it looks identical um, because it works, you know, and they have a good streamlined process to get that put in place. Yeah, and with the Airstreams, you typically have to choose either an oven or a microwave. Yeah, and the smaller ones, in except the for the rear bed. I'm sorry to interrupt, but somebody keeps mentioning all the time that if you get the 25 rear bed, you get both. So with the ORV, it's just really great to have both the oven and the microwave. Yeah, and in the bedroom, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit with the sideways bed of the Airstream and the only one counter on the side uh, nightstand. So only one of us would have a nightstand at night and there's only one locker for um, like hanging clothes there and that set of drawers. So it is nice to have a full north and south, full queen bed, 60 by 80. And um, it also has like, like I said, the solid surface countertops on both sides, storage lockers, drawers on both sides. So it gives you that nice, like, I don't know, his and hers type Night of- Nightstands. His yeah. and hers type of bedroom that um, was just a good, a good bonus. And moving up to the 27 FB and Airstream, that's where you get that. And so I think the 27 Airstream um, is, is a much better interior design. It's just the length gets a little bit longer on that at almost 28 feet long. Mm-hmm. And then of course, Airstreams are known for their great towability on the road. They're super streamlined, Airstream, and they have you know great, like, like I said, these torsion axles, which are quiet. You don't have to lube them. Uh, they work really well. There is shocks on the Airstreams too for dampening the ride a little bit. Um, and then of course, we talked about lifting it three inches, which is like just a, a must. I think I read mm -hmm. people all the time that that lift it and they just talk about how they can get it in their driveway now without yeah. it dragging so it's really not about like dragging it off road it's more like gas stations um you know driveways and inclines like that so the orv just has more ground clearance i think it's like 18 inches taller overall so instead That's of a lot instead of like 10 foot it's 11 and a half feet so it is much taller so it probably won't tow as good as an airstream but all of that uh, space is going to be extra insulation in the roof, extra headspace in there, and then extra ground clearance. So all of those things kind of just weighed into it. And since we love dry camping out on BLM land and stuff, unplugged, for us it just makes sense to have a trailer that can go along with our tremor truck. You know, like we thought, what good is having this badass truck that can go anywhere if we're really limited by the ability of our trailer that we're pulling. Mm -hmm. And then the last point is, of course, we have to talk about price a little bit. The MSRP on the Airstreams is about a hundred grand, if not closer to like 120 grand, if you're going to like a Globetrotter or something like that. Um, so that's really expensive without even talking about tax title registration and um, any type of accessories that you're gonna put on this thing. Cause we all know once you buy something, the, the spending does not <laughs> it stop does not there. stop there. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about the Black Series 21 HQ. We don't know a whole lot about this. We really just kind of discovered it, whatever, a few weeks ago. And it's intriguing. It's way on the, on the aggressive end of off-road clearance and capability, which we really love. I mean, it's got a great look to it. Um, yeah, with the, with the off-roading, it's like, then you open the door and you look inside and it has these touches that look visually pleasing. They have nice fashion forward aesthetics. It gives you a little bit of the Airstream vibe, obviously not quite the same, mm -hmm. but you can tell that whoever's designing this is keeping aesthetics in mind. Yeah. So it's a really intriguing option in that aspect. But some of the things that really triggered us and not going any farther with it was the width of them. They're a narrower, I think they're seven and a half feet wide and no slide out. So even the Airstream is, you know, eight, I think eight and a half feet wide. So these are seven and a half feet wide. It was longer. I mean, it was listed at 28 foot, eight inches. Again, I don't know about like the tires, spare tire in the back of that thing. Um, but, uh, we just don't know if I would even be able to stand up in it. And so that was just a huge thing. There's, there's no ducted air conditioning because the ceiling was already so low. So it would have been just like what we had in the, the van with like a loud air conditioner right there. And, and it was right in the middle of it. So 
if I would have had to duck in that. And I, I'm pretty sure somebody commented that they were uh, around six feet and they had to duck on there. Mm -hmm. So that really helped out a lot. And we had another commenter. That's a big deal to be able to stand up straight. Like a big deal. Yeah, it is. So I, I think it's geared more towards the off-road I mean, obviously like the weekenders. Yeah. And so, you know, for us without being in one, we can't really make a, a good judgment call on mm -hmm. it. And so at that point we just couldn't, uh, go after it. Another thing that was slightly concerning was just the fact that it is so new. Um, it doesn't quite have the reputation of being a solid RV company. Um, and that was something that we considered. It didn't It didn't make us say no to it by any means, but it was in the back of our mind when we were considering it. Yeah, we had a commenter say that they put a deposit down on an HQ21 and they ended up backing out of it just because I guess there wasn't enough reassurance um, with uh, warranty work and, and I guess quality of the company. So, you know, again, we don't know because um, we've never seen one and we can't really attest to any of that, but... Uh, little personal experiences that's why you know people watch youtube videos like this to kind of get people's opinions on what they're doing and why they're doing it get conversations with real people and yeah. real experiences and so we're listening to what people are saying in the comments and you know their real world mm -hmm. scenarios so all that comes into play and while it would be really cool i look forward to seeing one of these things when we're yeah. out west like we're definitely going to be touring some of these trailers that we've never got to see and with hopefully a little bit more, you know, invested enthusiasm because maybe one day that's something we want to switch to. Yeah, right. So with the small size that we wanted to stick at with the trailer, I think the ultimate deal breaker was the small width and the small height on the Black Series. Yes. The MSRP on these Black Series is almost $80,000, I think, for their their large 21-foot um, model. And so... That's getting up there. That's getting up there. That's not a cheap chunk of change no. <laughs> so you have to kind of think about that as well and um, something you got to consider the black series tanks were pretty good they had I think 66 gallons on the fresh but the gray and the black were 26 gallons a piece so again that's you know better than nothing but it's not really what we wanted we wanted to get much bigger than that yeah it, that's only like a 10 gallon bump up from what we had in the interstate and everybody knows that was our number one struggle in the interstate was our black tank. Yep. So it would have uh, ex expanded our, our stay a little bit, but it probably uh, would have been a frustration point at some time in the future. Mm -hmm. So the insulation on the black series um, is also kind of unknown to us. I saw footage where the underbelly is not enclosed. So that means all of your tanks and your water lines are exposed. Um, so, you know, I don't know how good the walls and the ceiling are, and that might be that might be fine, but if you don't have the underbelly enclosed and heated with the ducting, then, you know, you're really in trouble because although we avoid that cold weather like the plague, we still found ourselves in the 20s multiple times this past year. Yeah. Just in, overnight. In the desert in the winter, the nights get cold, and there, I mean, there was snow in Arizona this year, this past year. Mm -hmm. So you never know what mother nature is going to throw at you. The Texas thing that happened. Yeah. I mean, there's some freak weather happening. Um, and like Aaron mentioned earlier, just having family in Minnesota, Wisconsin, like if a tragedy occurs or something that we need to go home for, heaven forbid, the last thing that we want is for our home to be a deterrent for us to go home in a time of need. Yeah. It'll just be one less thing we have to worry about and think about. And so... Um, that's just one more reason why ORV made sense to us. Okay, I think the last uh, thing we'll talk about is the Lance. And mm -hmm. uh, the model that kind of caught our eye was the 2075. It's like a 25 foot trailer. Um, we don't, we've never been in a Lance either. We don't know a lot about them, but they seem to have good quality. Their tanks are phenomenal at 45, 45, 45. That's great. Great size and tanks. tons of people recommended a Lance. Lance yeah. got a lot of recommendations, and honestly, like I think Lance, I'm very unfamiliar with. <laughs> I don't know much about it. Yeah, I think they're kind of um, the one reason why I looked more away from them is because I feel like they're more they're designed for lightweight. Um, they're designed for half ton trucks, SUVs. 
I'm not saying their quality isn't good, but I'm saying they obviously use lighter materials and their cargo carrying capacity is going to be way less. So the ORV is built old school and it's built very heavy. The cargo carrying capacity is almost 4,000 pounds on our trailer. Uh, so that's a ton. And we are full-time RVers, so that makes sense for us that we're going to have more junk. Although we don't have a lot of stuff, but things add up very, very quickly, especially when you have giant tank sizes. Yeah. I mean, if you think about having full black and gray water, you know, in that Lance, that's a lot of cargo carrying capacity. And we start trying to throw in 150 pounds of dumbbells and all types of other junk that we start accumulating now. Yeah. It's it's going to add up. So I feel like um, that was kind of one of the reasons why I wasn't leaning more towards them. But I feel like they do really well with their insulation. I hear they also have like the thermal pane windows. Um, I don't know if their tanks are enclosed in the underbelly or not. I don't even remember um, if they said that. But it seems like they have good kind of uh, four season capabilities. They seem to be closer on the um, Airstream interior side. I showed you a few videos on them. Like they had the big bedroom with the big sky gazer. Mm, yes, up front. yeah, I remember that, they that's cool. huge windows in the side. They had a north south bed, Yeah. big cabinets on both sides. Yeah. They had the enclosed bedroom. Mm, yes, that was one thing that I, you know, this. The enclosed bedroom is nice, and I like that you can shut the door and you can block out sound because if one person wakes up and goes and starts coffee, you know, the other person's right there and can wake up. So the open concept on the ORV is nice, but I might have preferred a closed off. You know, having the closed door is nice. So that's one of those things that's like a, you don't really know what is better until you're in them both. Uh, but the kitchen, the kitchen was smaller than the van. Yeah. So I think like just off of that, we would have to eliminate it. And I know some of you guys mentioned some other models, maybe the 2285, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and so again, we just didn't get too far into them, but maybe there was a, a better Lance that uh, would fit our needs, needs even better. And so I look forward to going into one of those too and, and checking them out a little bit more. For sure. The ground clearance is not as high on those Lances either. So, um, ORV is really built for the western mountainous states. It's designed to be uh, out there on these forest roads and out in these kind of rutted and gravelly and rocky type of areas, mountainous type of regions. Like that's what they're there for. They are an offshoot of North Woods Manufacturing, which are the ones that do the Arctic Fox and the Nash trailers which are really known for their good quality and good four season capability. They are not known for their interior decorations, uh, but they just, you know, they're for a different kind of crowd hunting, fishing. Rugged. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's a good thing. That's what we want is that, yeah. that base that they have. And then, um, like I said, they're doing a really good job with this new titanium package, yeah. making it a little bit more modern and perhaps appealing to, a, you know, a different maybe full-time type of crowd yeah we look forward to doing like a huge tour on this thing obviously when we get it um, and then we'll be doing some upgrades ourselves so that's going to be very enjoyable yeah we look forward to sharing that with you guys and um, it was fun to see all of the comments as Aaron mentioned all the suggestions the hints the tips the knowledge so we're curious to see how everybody reacts to our decision. Yeah, and let us know. Did we make the right decision after you watch this video? Or are you still holding strong to what you thought we should have gotten? I'd love to hear what you think. Don't remember